Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 7. If you do not have your Bibles, the text will be on the screen in just a moment. If you do not own a study Bible, everybody listen to me. If you do not own a study Bible, see me before you leave. I want to give you one for free. No strings attached. You don't have to sign out, sign a form or anything. Come see me at the end of service. If you do not have a study Bible at your home, God wants you to have one, so I'm going to give you one because the Word of God will change your life forever. So see me before you leave today, please. Doesn't matter if you've been to church here for three months or if this is your first day. I want you to leave this house with a Bible today. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to begin with the 24th verse. And praise God. This is what the Lord says. Praise the Lord. Anybody excited that God's in control? Thank God for those 30 people. Here today. And the Bible says this, Matthew 7, 24, Everyone then who hears these words of mine, this is Jesus speaking, everyone here who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Now listen to this, church. The benefit of having the house built on the rock is safety, protection. All right, everybody say safety, protection. The benefit of having the house, your life, built on the rock is safety and protection from danger. Listen to this. Therefore, preserving your life. Therefore, preserving your life. Jesus says that the house must be built on the rock. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm the house. I'm the house. I'm the house. All right? Listen to me. You could be homeless and still have a house built on the rock. You're the house. You're the house. You could have a dollar to your name, and your house could still be built on the rock. You're the house. All right? You're the house. And you've got to understand that before we get into the text anymore today. You're the house. Look at verse 24, Matthew 7, 24. Let's get that on the screen if we can. Matthew 7, 24. We're going to... We're going to study it. We're going to read it out loud. Here we go. One, two, three, go. Everyone. Stop right there. Watch it. Watch it. Everyone then who what? Hears. Everyone who hears. Have you ever been somewhere before. Maybe it's been church. God forbid it's not the case. But have you ever been somewhere before and you heard it, you just didn't apply it? Amen. You were listening, but you won't hearing. Right? Probably happened to some of you last night, fellas, when your wife told you to do something. You were listening. Amen. You didn't hear nothing. You were listening. Everybody say there's a difference. You were listening, but you didn't hear Everybody understand that? You were listening, but you didn't hear. Let's get the verse back up on the screen. Look at what, look at what it says. Everyone then who, what? Hears these words. All right, so look up here for a moment. Look up here for a moment. You got to be careful what you're listening to. You got to be careful who you're listening to. You understand? Be careful what and who you're listening to. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and then what? Does them. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got to apply it. You've got to apply it. Ladies, 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 it's just like this. It's like you get to Kohl's cash, right? Y'all know how y'all act when you get Kohl's cash. You'll go spend 100 bucks to save $2. You'll spend $20 in gas to save 50 cents. And you say, but I got to use it. I got to use it. You see how they've, they've tricked your mind into thinking if you've got something, you have to apply what you've been given. What if we treated our faith like that? What if the free gift of salvation... What if the gift of the deposit of the Holy Spirit, what if the gifts of the Spirit that God's Holy Spirit has placed in us, that He wants to work in us, what if we treated 
those gifts like that, well, I have it. I might as well take advantage of it. Amen? I've been given it. I better use it. We'll go out of our way to save a nickel just because we're going to save a nickel, but when it comes to things of eternity, we tend to shut it down because we don't want to take the time to do it because that takes a little more effort, right? That takes a little more effort. You've got to apply yourself to be engaged in the Word of God. So let's get it back up on the screen. Look at it again. Look at it again. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them. So we've got to hear it. We've got to do it. Look at what it says. We'll be like a what? Wise man who did what? Built his house on the rock. And so listen, we began this morning just a few moments ago talking about how the house built on the rock is for your safety, for your protection from danger. And it guarantees you preserving of life. Amen. Amen. The house built on the rock guarantees you the preserving of eternal life. Now listen to this now. If you want that house on the rock, you've got to hear the word, you've got to apply the word. Amen. You've got to hear the word, and you've got to apply the word. Just hearing it is not enough. Amen. Just hearing it is not enough. So you came here today, maybe some of you, to check the box. I went to church. I feel good about myself. That's not enough. Amen. I'd rather you leave here with your feelings hurt because of what I said, Amen. and it changed your life. Yeah. Then leave here feeling good because you came to church. You understand? Amen. You understand? Now, if the Word of God convicts you and it pricks your heart, praise the Lord. That's God speaking to you. That's God wanting to change you. That's God wanting to make you stronger than what you were before you came through those doors. That's a God that loves you so much that the one living true God says, I want to bring you up to where I am. Amen. I want to bring you up to where I am. See, look, I'm going to get rid of a myth right now. A lot of people say God will come down to where I'm at. Listen, listen, God will come get you, but he ain't staying there with you. Because the last I checked, the word says he's going to take me from faith to what? Faith. The word tells me that he's my redeemer. Yeah. The word tells me that he makes me born again. You understand? So we can't play games with grace and mercy and forgiveness and think that we're just going to keep on on this sin cycle. But as long as we come check the box, we're doing okay. Don't let Satan fool you. Amen. Don't let Satan fool you. Amen. It takes work. What you hear today, you're going to have to apply this evening. Amen. What you hear today, you're going to have to apply tomorrow. What you hear today, you have to apply next week. It is a practice of living. You understand? All right, so it's more than just hearing, but it's doing. We're called in Scripture not to just be hearers of the Word, but to be what? Doers of the Word. That's what the text says. Jot this down if you're taking notes. Deuteronomy chapter 32 in the 18th verse. Deuteronomy 32 verse 18. You see it on the screen there. <clears throat> Moses at this point is singing about the sin of Israel. And Moses charges them with the following. Moses says, you were unmindful of the rock that bore you. Yeah. Now, man, I'm going to tell you, that's a tremendous charge right there. Amen. Speaking of the sin of Israel, that is a tremendous charge. He says, you were unmindful of the rock that bore you, and you forgot the God who gave you what? I tell you, I don't ever want to be in that place. I know, I know in times in my life there have been moments when I have failed miserably and I have sinned miserably, and in the moment I'd forgotten all that God had done for me and I chose self. Anybody in here chose self over God before? Okay, if you can't raise your hand, you're choosing self right now because you don't want people to see you, and that's the solid truth of the matter. We have chose self over God. That's always wrong. You understand? That's always wrong. Tell your neighbor, that's not right. All right, that is always wrong. Look at it again. Deuteronomy 32, 18. You were unmindful of the rock that bore you, and you forgot the God who gave you birth. Now listen to this, church. Listen to this. In all that goes on around you, do not forget that God is still in authority. In all that goes on around you, do not forget that God is still in control. God being in control doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect on this earth. Amen. If you think it is, then what you're looking for is heaven. 
Now listen to that. If you think it's supposed to be perfect, down here, you're wrong. What you're looking for is heaven, and you have your expectations out of whack. Don't get bent out of shape that earth don't look like glory. You understand that? Don't get bent out of shape. Listen, because if we allow the enemy to cause our mind to get out of focus, we could miss the mark. We could miss the prize. We could begin to have doubt. We could begin to be unfaithful and disobedient. Don't miss what God is doing, no matter what's going on in your life right now, don't miss it. It may have not been how you wrote it up. It may have not been how you journaled it three years ago, one year ago, five years ago, ten years ago. It might not be what you've been praying for for the past ten years. But don't miss what God is trying to do because you're too busy trying to do it. Amen. You see, because I think sometimes we look for perfection. I got news for you. If you hadn't figured it out yet, you and I don't live in a perfect world. Amen. Listen to this. This is one thing that the Holy Spirit was showing me during my private time this morning. I just want to make sure the Lord is releasing me to say it. Listen to this. The Lord showed me this in my private time. If we had enough people in the church, I'm talking about the the church in the nation, the body of Christ in the nation. That's the Korean church, the Chinese church, the, the multicultural church, the white church, the black church. Isn't it a shame that we got to say that? It should just be the church. Amen. It should just be the church. Yes. So I'm going to reference it right now as the church because that's how it is and that's how God sees it and that's how we better see it. Yes. Amen. If we had enough men in the church yes. that would be as concerned about their house as they are the White House, this world would be changed. Amen. Now listen to me now. Listen to what the Lord was teaching me this morning. People are so bent out of shape over a position. And I understand what weighs in the balance, but no, no, but listen to me. Don't you go looking for perfection when perfection is unattainable in it. Listen to what the Lord showed me. People are so bent out of shape over a title of a man when the title we should be concerned about men is priest over our home. Amen. Priest over your home. That's what you are, men. You're the priest, according to the Word of God. You're the priest over your home. And if we get as serious about being the priest of my house as I am who I want to put in a White House, my life would be changed. My children's lives would be changed. My wife's life would be changed. Generations to follow me would be changed. My neighbors should be changed. My family that visits me would be changed. Everybody would have to be confronted with change if we would be concerned, my brothers, over the trueness of what it is to be a priest over my home. But that's not how we've been trained to do it because we're really good at pointing at other people rather than calling self out. Now, that's going to make some of you bent and out of shape, and you're going to argue on on me on that. I don't care, because you're never going to convince me that me being priest over my home is not as important of who the leader of a house is. You understand? Because that leader of that house has nothing to do with the salvation in my house. So nothing is more important than the salvation of souls in my home. Nothing is more important than the salvation of souls in your home. Nothing! Nothing! Let me prove it. Let me prove it. When it comes to the return of Christ, is Christ going to take home the government or is he taking home the souls that he saved? He's taking home the souls that were saved. We better wake up, church. We're being fooled. We're being duped. 
and we've got things all out of whack. If we could be so concerned about the salvation status of our soul as we were about a vote, this life would be changed and we wouldn't be in the situation we've been in for the past 50 years. I'd rather have it the way God intended it. Get rid of the Republican name, get rid of the Democrat name, and let's just be servants of God. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. And listen, if that upsets you, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. That's the problem with the lines that have been drawn. Everybody's choosing sides, and, and listen, regardless of truth, everybody's chosen a side. Go to truth. Go to truth. God Almighty, would you just go to truth? Listen to this. You could die tomorrow and it don't matter who got voted in. And the only thing that matters is whether your soul's saved or not. And you know what else matters? The grandchildren you're going to leave behind. What kind of impact did you have? The children you're going to leave behind. What kind of impact did you have? It's far more important than any government. What kind of impact will you have? Listen, I don't care how dark the moment gets in your life. That's the time that you shine brightest for Christ. That's the time. It becomes easier to shine when it's darkest around you. Some of you, listen to this, some of you aren't even going to have to work hard to evangelize. It's going to be so easy if it's that dark. Don't let Satan confuse you on your purpose. Don't let him do it. See, you may not have the answers right now for whatever may be going on in your life. That's okay. But if someone told you that you were going to know all the answers, you got lied to. You got lied to. I've said it many times. I'm going to say it again. I don't want to serve a God that I know everything about. Because that means he's no greater than my way of thinking. I don't want to be able to explain everything away about God. That means that he's on my level and I'm on his level and I know the level I'm on is nowhere where God should be. You understand that? Hmm. See, God being in control doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect. But it does mean this. It does mean this. That God's always going to make a way for you on this earth. How many people in here God has made a way for you at some point in your life? He ain't going to stop now. Isaiah 55. Go there with me, please, church. He ain't going to stop now. I've been praying for a long time that one day we'd look up. And there'd be Korean people sitting in here, Japanese people sitting here, white, black, brown, red, yellow, doesn't matter. The true body of Christ that wants to come in and worship the Father together, receive his word, and be the family that he's called us to be. And if that upsets you, you're in the wrong place. Isaiah 55 verse 8. And the word of God says this. God says, for my thoughts are not what? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now I'm going to read it again. Listen, this is God speaking to the, to the people. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So God's got it. Whatever it is in your life, whatever it is in your life, God's got it. Whatever it is you're in need of, God's got it. Whatever you need removed from your life, God's got it. But in the process of God doing the work for your life, understand he's going to do it how he knows best to do it. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways, my ways, watch this, declares who? The Lord. So his way is not your way. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all in this room have ever messed up big time in your life before? Go ahead, raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. 
you never go find where God's messed up. You never go find where God's messed up. So just trust his will for your life. Trust his plan for your life. Look at it, verse 8. God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Here's the best news. If you've got something going on in your life right now you can't explain, let me give you the best news you're going to have today. Just surrender to the fact that God's in control. Amen. Just surrender to the fact that God's in control. Your ways and my ways are not his ways. And thank God that his thoughts are higher than your Amen. thoughts and my thoughts. Amen? Thank God that he's not thinking the way you and I are thinking. Tell your neighbors, stay on the rock. Now listen to this. I believe this, that there's going to be someone here today that needs to be reminded of the following. There's going to be someone here today that needs to be encouraged right now. And I want to remind you, be encouraged in the presence of the Lord. Be encouraged from the word that you're hearing today. There's going to be some people that need to be told, get back on the rock. Yes. Do not waver. Get back on the rock. That's a capital R in the scripture. Get back on the rock. There's going to be some people here today that need to be told, turn back to God. Yes. Maybe some people need to hear the fact of, do not allow your surroundings to cause you to fall back into the depths of fear again. Amen. But get back on the rock. Matthew chapter 7 verse 25. Go there with me, church. Yes. Matthew chapter 7, beginning with the 25th verse. And look at what Jesus says at this part of the text. Matthew 7, 25. This is good stuff right here, what Jesus is saying. He didn't ever say nothing bad, amen? Look at this. Let's read this out loud together. Ready, go. And the rain fell... And the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it... Stop right there. Stop right there. Now, I mean, that's just like being at a good buffet. Yeah. That's right. That is just like being at a buffet. All right? Get it back up on the screen one more time, please. Thank you. And what fell? Okay. So look at your David and say, you're going to get wet. The Bible never tells us that we won't get wet, but let me tell you what the Bible does tell us. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it and are what? Safe. Say amen to that. You say amen to that. So no matter what you got going on right now, understand you may get wet in the storm, but you're going to be all right. Now let me tell you why I know you're going to be all right. Because everywhere in Scripture, Old and New Testament, I see this. God has won every single battle. You're not going to find one jot, not one iota of where God slipped. Not going to find it. You're not going to find where God faltered. Not going to find it. You're not going to find where an enemy was larger than God. Not going to find it. You're not going to find where God lost. Not going to find it. But let me tell you what you will find over and over again. That God is victorious. And because he is victorious, we walk in the victory of Christ. Now, let's look at that. Get that back up on the screen, please. Here we go. And the rain, what? And the... Stop right there. Not only did it rain, because sometimes you got a little issue, and other times you feel like you done walked in the swamp. It rained, and the floods came. Look at what it says next after the floods. And the what? The That's right. Ladies, you ever, you ever did your hair and you were trying to go somewhere nice and it's raining? And you go to get out your vehicle and... <laughs> oh, it just seems like the end of the world for some of y'all. You spent four hours trying to get that to look nice. <laughs> Nowhere in Scripture are we going to be told that you're never going to go through a hard time. Amen. But let me tell you what you will find everywhere in Scripture. 
that God will be right there with you. Amen. Look at what it says next. Get that up there. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house. Any of y'all ever felt like you just got battered up and beaten up by the storm in life? Oh. Now look at what it says. But that house, tell your neighbor, I'm the, house. I'm the house. Remember, you're the house. We started out talking about that. You're the house. So you got rain on, you got flooded on, the winds blew and you got beat on, but you did not fall. Now listen to me. That's your testimony. That's your testimony that you went through a trial, but God rescued me. I went through a hard time, but God saved the day. I was a low down, dirty individual, but God redeemed me, picked me up rescued me, washed me, made me white as snow through the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. God has saved my soul. You understand? I've been rained on. I've been beat on. The winds come up against me, but I still stand in the name of the Lord. Listen, you don't have an excuse to fall down. The Bible says this, though I stumble, I shall not fall. Though I stumble, I shall not fall. You and I do not have an excuse to fall down. If we fall, it's because we relied on our own power rather than the power of the Lord and His Spirit working on the inside of us. You don't have a right to fall. I don't have a right to fall. And even when we stumble, it's in our flesh. Listen, listen. You'll never stumble. You'll never stumble when you're operating in the Spirit because the Spirit will not tempt you. The Spirit will not tempt you. God will test you, but He will not tempt you. And God is not going to set you up to fall. Because what comes, before the, what comes before the fall? The trip, the stumble. You understand? God's not going to lead you into stumbling because He don't want you to fall. God's not going to lead you into stumbling because he, won't, he don't want you to sin. So if you and I fall, it's our own fault. It's our own doing. But whenever we're walking in the Spirit, remember the Bible says that we need to stay in step with who? The Spirit. And so as long as we're staying in step with the Spirit of God, we're not falling. So listen, everyone in this room has fallen before because we've fallen in the flesh. If you're here today and you're tired of falling, I want to encourage you, choose Christ. Choose Christ. Choose Christ. If you're here today and you've already chose Christ, then next time you get ready to be tempted, choose him in the moment. Amen. Choose Christ over your sin. Yes. You understand? You agree with me on that? Yes. Choose Christ over your sin. So when you get tempted to stumble, choose Christ instead of stuff. Run the race. That's right. Run the race that's been set out for you. Yes. Run the race. Let's look at the verse. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall. Here's the reason it did not fall. Because it had been what, church? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, God is so good. God is so faithful. Amen, church? Can you say amen to that? With that in mind, I want you to go to the 18th Psalm. Somebody told me one time after one of something I was pre an event I was preaching at, somebody came up and told me, they said, you sure do go through a whole lot of scripture. I said, what the world is there else to go into? Amen. Yeah. That's right. Psalm 18, beginning with the first verse. And the word of God says this, praise the Lord. David writing this psalm. David writes, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord God is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. And the cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. 
And in my distress, I called upon the Lord to my God. I cried for help, and from his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Now, I want you to look at the first verse again. Psalm 18, verse 1. David writes this. David writes, I love you, O Lord, my strength. When you see Lord in all capital, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, it's always referring to Lord my God, okay? And so he's saying, O Lord my God, okay? He's saying, I love you, O Lord my God, my strength. Now you have to understand this. Listen to me, you've got to understand this, that what made that house strong was the rock it was built on. Amen. You're only going to be as strong as your faith. Amen. You understand that? You only be strong in your faith. Listen, if you can believe God gonna do it, God's gonna do it. If you can't believe it, you're wavering in it, then you may not see it. You only gonna be as strong as your faith. And so the reason, the reason the house is strong is because the rock is stronger. And think about the foundations of your home. What's stronger? The foundation or the wood it sits on? The wood that sits on it. The foundation, it's the rock. That's why it's called the solid rock. You understand? A tornado can come and blow that thing over. A hurricane can come and demolish it, but the foundation is still there. Amen. And so the wind came, the rain came, the flood came. David recognizes that God is his strength. Amen. Yes. As soon as you start feeling fearful or doubtful or dealing with anxieties, the enemy has tempted you. And then you've taken your eyes off of God and your focus is now on things of the world and that's dangerous. Amen. No matter what you do, remain on the rock. That's right. No matter what you do, remain on the rock. Look at what David says, okay? Look at what David says that the rock, whose God, does for you. Look at it, verse 1, or verse 2, 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my what? Fortress. Fortress. Tell your neighbor, he protects me. You better believe he does. You better believe he does. You better believe he does. Let me just share with you a testimony that, that uh, I haven't shared a whole lot. Uh, but many, many years ago, I was in a, uh, before church service started, I was a lot younger. And uh, uh, I was, before, before it started, we were praying. The worship team was together, and, and we, we, we were praying. And it wasn't even at this church. It was, it was before God even called us to, to, to begin this ministry. And we're praying. And I had been faithfully for years in my personal life, I had been faithfully for years praying, Lord, put angels, mighty warrior angels, on the corners of the property. Wherever I was, whether it be at my home, whether it be at the church that, that, that uh, I was associate pastor in at, at the time, it didn't matter where. Okay, I was praying, Lord, put angels, put warrior angels on the property. Mighty war angels. That's what I would pray. Mighty war angels on the corners of the property. And in the process, years of praying that. Now here we were beginning ready to start this service. And we're, we're in a prayer circle, the worship team and myself, and we're praying. And I prayed that prayer out loud. And I don't know. You know how Paul says, I don't know whether I was in spirit or, uh, you know, in my body. In the vision. Look, I can tell you this. All I know is that I saw my eyes were looking somewhere else on the outside of the church, okay, that was to be built. And so I was actually a few hundred yards because we were meeting in a barn until the church was going to be built. And so I saw where the church was going to be built. I saw what the church looked like. And then I saw angels. Watch this now because look, look, look. I saw angels standing in guard. I mean, some of the most strongest, powerful things I've ever seen in my life. Standing in guard at the corners where I had been praying. Now, here's what's amazing about it. I, I fell down. The Spirit hit me. I fell down. I'm weeping. When I could finally come to and tell everybody what God had seen because my strength had just drained. They begin to tell people what I had saw. There was an elderly lady that, that didn't even go to church there, but she lived across the street. And when the pastor had told her what I had saw, when the pastor told her what I, what I had saw, she said, whoa, wait a minute. What did he see? And, she, and he tells her again what I saw. She says, years ago, before y'all even started meeting over in that barn, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and I looked out my bedroom window and I saw the church with four angels standing around it. And she said, take this paper and see if it is what he saw. And so the pastor comes up to me and says, hey, 
Did it look like this? And I said, whoa! Yes, Lord. Amen. That's what I saw. Yes. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Watch this. Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my what? Man, if you don't think God's hand is in your life, you've bought into a lie. God's hand is in your life. God's hand is working in your life. And if you haven't surrendered and submitted to the authority of God, let today be the day that you do so. You know, the Bible says that there's times where we entertain angels and know it not. There's angels fighting in the, in, in, in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly places. They're already there fighting. Understand that God is in control. Doesn't matter what you got going on right now. Now watch this, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my what? Tell your neighbor, I'm on the way out. If, look, that's the type of faith you got to have. If you're going through something, look, don't even claim it over yourself. But you know what? I'm on the way out of that. I'm on the way out. I'm on the way out. I'm on the way out. I'm sick of hearing about it. I'm on the way out. If we spend more time walking away from the foolishness, I'm on the way out. We need to make a T-shirt that has that on it. I'm on the way out. I'm on the way out of every conversation that's not glorifying God. I want to be on the way out. Out of any meeting that doesn't bring glory to God, I want to be on the way out of that. And guess what? Here's the kicker on the back of the shirt. We'll show people getting raptured up off the planet. I'm on the way out of here too. I'm glad 15 of y'all can get excited about that. You've got to understand the word for what it's talking about. Listen to this. Everyone look up here for a moment. The word of God was written for you. For you. And if you'd have been the only one on the planet, it'd have been written for you. You better start reading it like that. You better start listening to the word like that. You didn't come here just because someone forced you. You came here because God compelled you. Know that his word is for you. See, when you start coming to church because you know the word that's going to be given is for you, it'll change you. It'll change you. It will, it will change you. We see him on the news every year. Some of y'all were just probably a part of it. Black Friday. Y'all go to fighting on who's going to be first in line. You're leaving, you're leaving an hour before midnight to get down there. So, 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 I'm not saying nothing wrong with it, but I'm just saying this. You can get so caught up. You can get so caught up in trying to be first in the TV line. Yeah. And then you're radioing somebody. You over there in the games? You in the games? Uh, I've seen this nonsense. Yeah. I've seen this ridiculousness. Right. They go out in parties and you're contacting one another. I've seen it. When the employee rolls through there with a forklift and he's got a pallet of televisions and it's like, it's like the Red Sea parts and people just start shifting in the store and the only way they knew where to go is because people are calling people that they're with. The clerk said the TVs are going to be on sale in 30 minutes in aisle four. You got to get there now. Yeah. Amen. I can't leave here because I'm in the crock pot section. <laughs> No, you don't understand what I'm telling you. I'm going to save 50 cents on this crock pot. I can't get out of line. I was here. If, if we could digest the Word of God that way, personally, it would transform our lives. And what looked to be false will understand is truth. And what we once thought was false, listen, will understand that it is truth. Yeah. It is truth. It is truth. It is truth. Amen. The Word is always true. The Word of God is always true. Look at what it says next, verse 2. And so the Lord God is my rock. God is my fortress. 
God is my what? Deliverer. Hmm. Some of you in here, just like me, you may have gotten out of a sticky situation before and didn't even know God's hands the one who done it, but God done it. That's right. Amen. I pulled out in an intersection two days ago. I haven't even told my wife this. Get ready. I pulled out of an intersection two days ago. Listen, I cross that intersection all the time. Scott's Fork is one of the most dangerous intersections in this county. I'm a true believer of it. I pulled up on traumatic accidents at that intersection. I, I implore every one of you, whenever you come across that intersection, please have your wits about yourself. Please. I can't tell you how many times I have, because I live there, I can't tell you how many times I have gone to pull across that intersection and the bar that comes down on your passenger side blocks the people that are coming from around the store. I'm telling you, please, 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 I don't want to do any of your funerals, so I'm telling you, please, don't die at that intersection. Two days ago, whatever it was, two, three days ago, I'm pulling out from that intersection, and the bar stopped me from seeing a vehicle that was pulling. Now, I've talked to a few people that frequent that intersection. They live in that area, and they said the same thing. It's something about where you sit, and that bar comes down, and how the road crooks just a little bit right there at that store. But I pull out, and thank God that the people coming down 153 were looking for me because I couldn't see them, and I was trying. And they hit their brakes. And the first thing I did was look at my eight-year-old son in the passenger seat because it would have hit him on his side. I said, thank God that he's my deliverer. Thank God he's my deliverer. Thank God he's my deliverer. Thank God he's my deliverer. Thank God. When you read the text personal, you understand that his hand is all in your life. Look at what it says. The Lord God is my rock. The Lord God is my fortress. God is my deliverer. God, my God, he goes on to say, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. Tell your neighbor, safe place. Safe place. Safe place. Safe place. Like I said earlier, the next time you go to feel like you're tempted to sin, choose Christ. He's your refuge. That's your safe place. Watch this. My shield. Now listen. The purpose of the shield is to keep you from getting hit by what you're attacked with. Some of you, some of us, all of us have been attacked by things we didn't even know was coming our way. Amen. We didn't even know was coming our way. Amen. That's how good God is. That's how good God is. There's going to be times when you feel the rain. We yeah. talked about that. There's going to be time where the flood comes. We talked about that. Yeah. There's going to be time where the wind beats down. We talked about that. But listen, in every case it says we will not fall. So there's going to be times where we know we're under the pressure of the attack. Amen. But then there's going to be other times where God just allows us to bypass the threat of the enemy. That's how good he is. My shield, verse 2, and the, listen, and the horn of my salvation. And when you read horn, it's talking about it's a symbolism for strength. And the horn of my salvation, my what? I just feel in my spirit, I hadn't planned on saying this, but I feel in my spirit that the Lord wants me to encourage you all this morning. Dig in. Dig in. Dig in by reading the Word. Dig in by increasing your prayer time with the Father. Dig in by worshiping Him throughout your day. Dig in in to God. Listen to this. No matter what goes on in your life, be blessed by this. This world does not change who God is for you. I mean, they tried to kill him. He rose up. They tried to silence him. He kept talking. They tried to discredit him. He was proven true. Even at the cross, they acknowledged Amen. this man was the Son of God. 
dig in. I want you to take a moment and be blessed by the fact that this world does not change who God is for you. Just let that soak in for a moment because with, with all that's going on around you, remind yourself that my God is my fortress. My God is my deliverer. Christ is my redeemer. My God is my refuge. My God is my shield. My God is my, my strength. Listen to me. Satan hates it when you talk like that. Man, he hates it. Satan hates it when you live your life like that. When you call on the name of the Lord, the devil hates it. He hates it. When you acknowledge that you stand behind the shield whose name is God, the devil hates it. He knows he can't penetrate that. He can't get through that. He can't get around that. He can't get over it. He can't get under it. He can't bypass it. When your faith causes you to stand behind your father, nothing's going to take you out of here. Nothing's going to remove you. Nothing's going to remove you because God's not going to be removed. I mean, everybody say, clean close. Let me give you a good, good analogy. Dads, let me talk to you in here for a moment, dads. And, and moms, too. Uh, you, remember, you remember when your little one was, was little? Everybody remember that? Now they can be 250 pounds and you still reference him as your baby. I got news for you. He stopped being your baby about 300 pounds ago. However, do you remember when the little fella or the little lady, you remember when, when they got fearful or maybe they tripped up or got scared, they came and just wrapped around your leg. And as a parent, that felt so good, didn't it? Yeah. Didn't it feel so good? And at times, at times, dads, I know, I know with myself, he'd be, one of, one of my boys be wrapped around my leg, and I'd just kind of walk with him. Yeah. Anybody ever done that before? Yeah. Hey, you remember those days? Remember those days? The helpless, listen to this, the helpless was clinging to the helper. Amen. The weak, hear this, the weak was clinging to the strength. Yes. Yes. Cling close to God. Yes. And no matter what comes down your path, you will not fall. Remember what, we, remember what we talked about earlier. The Bible says this, Though I stumble, I shall not what? Oh. So either you're going to believe what God's Word says for you or you're not. But I'm going to charge you in the name of the Lord today, believe all of it. All of it. Believe all of it. Absolutely believe all of it. Cling close to God. Exodus chapter 34. Turn there with me. Exodus 34. And we're going we're gonna to get, get going at the 29th verse. God is good, amen? Stay on the rock, church. Stay on the rock. Stay on the rock. Exodus 34, beginning with the 29th verse. When Moses came down from... Mount Sinai or Sinai, however you want to pronounce it, with two tablets of the testimony in his hand. As he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with who? God. He'd been talking with God. Verse 30, Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord God had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. And when Moses went in before the Lord God to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out, and when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in 
to speak with him. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that Jesus has come. The veil has been removed. And now every one of you in this room can draw into the presence of the glory of God for yourself. For yourself. For yourself. Now, I don't want you to miss what's being talked about right here. When Moses spent time with God, it changed him. When Moses spent time with God, it had an effect even on his outer countenance. Amen. On his outer countenance. See, when you leave here today, when you leave here today, if you've listened to what's been said and not judged it, Amen. just because this young guy's up there yelling behind the stage, <laughs> if you've actually listened to what was read over you today, it has been a benefit to your soul. If, if you've listened to it, it will charge your spirit yes. and cause an edification work to take place. Let me tell you why. Because you were, you were meant to receive it. Yes. No different than if you planted a tomato plant, it was meant to receive yes. water. And when it rains, it gets strong. Now, let me just bring something that the, that the Lord just showed me. Have you ever noticed you can water a plant? You can water a plant from your water hose all you want. Let it rain on it for two hours, and it's stronger than you watering that thing out your water hose. That's right. Let it get some good rain. Yeah. Let it get two hours of good soaking rain. Yeah. You say, Pastor, it's the, it's the same rain. I know, but you try to just dump it all on there one time. Let it get some good, slow Soaking rain. See, and when you come up in this house, it's your time for the word to just soak across you. And when you leave here, you should feel better about yourself. Not just because you checked a box. Not just because you finally came and she's been nagging you to get here for months. Not because you came and he's been nagging you to get here for months. It will make your spirit feel better on the inside because God created this word to manifest up inside your life and it will charge you if you've received it right. It will do the right thing for you and you'll leave here thinking to yourself, I want to come back and get more of that. Now, you can, you can plug your cell phone up to the charger, but if the charger's not in the wall correctly, you ain't going to get no charge. You understand what I'm saying? When you come in here, Make sure you're tuned in so that you can get the charge. So that you can get what the Spirit of God is actually trying to do in your life. When you come in here, you should be telling yourself, God, I'm here today, and I'm telling myself, I'm going to leave here changed. If I get one word out of this message, I'm looking for one word. I'm looking for one word that can help change my life. Now, if you received it correctly you will be given opportunities to share it with people Amen. over the coming weeks. Over the coming weeks. Because as God had used me to pour into you, he's going to use you to pour into somebody else. And on and on and on it goes. So come in here expecting the word to do what only the word can do. It'll change you. I want you to look back at the text. Exodus 34, look at verse 35. The people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with them. I want to remind you of something before we close. It's not Satan might, it's Satan is gonna. So listen to this. Satan is going to try to keep your focus on others rather than yourself. Amen. Now, remember what we talked about earlier. We get so caught up in what's going on right now. But look, the most important position in America is your house because you're the priest of your home. Yeah. Hear that now. The most important position in America is your home. Amen. It's your home. Jeremy, what road do you live off of? Huh? 
Flynn Lane. We ought to be praying for the house on Flynn Lane the way we pray for the White House. God, there's a priest in the home on Flynn Lane. Change him. Shake him. Break him where he needs to be broken. Edify him. Lift him up. God, exalt him in your name. Do a work in Flynn House. You understand? All right. Dante, you live off Military Road. God, I'm praying for that house off Military Road. Lord, there's a priest in that home over there. God, raise him up. Train him up. Break him up. Build him up. Do what you need to do as he prepares to start a family. Equip him now rather than later because there's a priest in that home on Military Road. Jim, what, house, what road do you live off of? Pridesville. God, if we could just pray for the house on Pridesville, that one house may change five houses. That one house might change five houses. And in those five houses, each change five houses. That's the house. I'd rather you pray for every house in this room than one house up on a hill. It'll change some stuff. Remember what we said earlier. Remember what we said earlier. The only thing that matters is the salvation status of souls. Guys, that's all that matters. Ladies, that's all that matters. That's the only thing that makes a difference. It's the salvation of souls. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Legislators are going to come and go. Governors will come and go. Presidents will come and go. Leaders will come and go. Preachers will come and go. Teachers will come and go. The greatest of the greatest have come and gone. The worst of the worst have come and gone. The best of mediocrity has come and gone. And the only thing that mattered with all of it was whether or not their soul was saved. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what we need to be focused on, church. That's it. Don't let Satan cloud your view. Don't let Satan cloud your way of thinking. What matters is the salvation of a soul. I'm praying Christ comes back this evening. It don't matter who my leader is. Because if he comes back this evening, I'm gone anyway. I'm gone anyway. See, but see how sly the devil is? Do you see how sly the devil is? If he can get us all worked up and divided and fighting on each other and bickering with each other and pointing each other out. We get so worried looking at other people when really we're praying God change them and the whole time God's trying to say, I'm trying to change you. I'm trying to change you. God change them. I'm trying to change you. Because I love you. Whew. How many people in this room need change? Everybody should have your hand up. And if your neighbor can't raise it, raise it for them. Everybody needs a hand up. Look, on the count of three, we're going to say, I need change. One, two, three. I need change. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I want to be more like Jesus Christ. Yeah. I want to have, I want to see more power of the Holy Spirit working in my life. I want to experience more glory of God's provision. I want to see more redemption working in and around my life. Hey, if I'm going to be selfish, I want all of it in Christ. Yeah. Give me everything God's got. Give me everything God's got for me. Yeah. See, the enemy will teach us a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. No, I want everything that God has for me, everything that God has for me. I don't want to waste any time. I don't want to waste any time. I want everything that God has for me. You need to want everything that God has for you. And when you leave this place, men, let me talk to you. When you leave your home, your castle, your church, when you leave your home, what kind of congregation, priest of the home, did you leave behind? What did you leave? Grandfathers, what did you leave? I'm not worried about your legacy. I'm worried about the salvation status of someone's soul. We can even get hung up in that word, Amen. legacy. Well, are they saved or not? That's all that matters. Amen. You could have a great legacy and all of them dying and going to hell. Amen. Is the soul saved or is it not? Is the soul saved or is it not? Amen. That's all that matters. 
and on someone's deathbed, they can confess Christ. And the so-called legacy meant nothing. But the only thing it did was the confession of Christ. It's all that matters. Look at your neighbor and say, my God's got it. Tell your other neighbor, stay on the rock. Let's stand and pray. Let's stand and pray. I want to remind each of you that being in the presence of God changes you. Being in the presence of God changes things, changes people. And in the fifth chapter of Matthew, you and I are called to be two things. Jesus says that you're to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Don't allow the devil to get in the way of you being that today. Father, we come before you in the great and the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. There's no higher name no other name by which man must be saved. And we're thankful, Father, that you are in control. We thank you that there's no higher power. And we thank you that even in all your sovereignty, in all your might and in all your glory, God, we thank you that you still loved us so much that you sent Jesus Christ for every one of us. My most favorite time in the week is being able to remind you that Jesus Christ is the only way to God for eternity. And if you've never, if you've never accepted Jesus in your life as Lord and Savior I want you to take a minute I want you to consider what's at stake the kingdom of God is at hand God wants you to be in it so he sent Christ down to die, defeat death, live he rose again and because he lives, you live freely choose what he freely offered so if you're here today and you want to get on the rock if you're here today and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior then right where you are I invite you to just raise your hand right where you're at right now today's your day to say Lord I want salvation of my soul I see you anybody else Lord I see you anybody else Lord, today's my day. Today's my day. Today is my day. Yes, Lord. For those that raise your hand just right where you are, I want you to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I ask you to come into my life and save my soul. I recognize, Lord, that you died on the cross so that I could be forgiven. I pray, Lord, that you'd fill me with the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit, that you would make aware to me the spiritual gifts that you have for me, and that you would create in me a hunger for your word. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for those people that raise their hand, Lord, that they would understand that at this moment they're set apart. That at this moment, at this very moment, at this very moment, they're set apart. God, I pray, I pray that you would overwhelm them today with who you are, reminding them of how much you love each of them. 
God, I pray for everyone else in this room as we depart this place today, that your blessing be with us, that your anointing would cover us, that your truth would just permeate from us. Continue to change us for your glory, Father. Continue to change us for your glory, Father. Remind us of your faithfulness forever and always. In Jesus' precious name and blood, we ask all these things. Everybody said together, church. Hallelujah. Let's give God a clap of praise. God is worthy.